In this video, I'm going to show you how to do an ice splice in Yale Blue Moon rope. Uh, Blue Moon is a half inch rope. Uh, it's a double braid rope. It's sold under many different names depending upon the color of the rope. Some of those names include Aztec, Luna, Poison Ivy, Sumac, Aerofrog, and Focus. Uh, Blue Moon is a fairly easy rope to splice. It's just your standard double braid splice. Uh, there are a couple of tricks that you can use that make it a lot easier, and I'll show you those in this video. The tools you're going to need to do this splice are a pair of scissors, a carabiner, a couple of alligator clips come in handy. Uh, you're going to need a half inch tubular fid, uh, and I use a smaller fid for extracting the core. Uh, you're going to need a uh, wire fid like this. I put a handle on it so I can pull on it. Uh, you can get these wire fids for just a few dollars from Westbur Tree Supply. Um, you're going to need a Sharpie pencil, and you're going to need a little marlin spike, and a tape measure. Um, it also helps to have a rubber mallet like this. You don't absolutely have to have this, but it uh, comes in handy for helping to bury the splice. Alright, so the first step in doing this splice is to uh, lay your half inch tubular fid along the rope like that. And uh, the first mark on the cover is going to be one tubular fid up the rope from the end of the rope. And I'm just going to use some string to mark that so you can see it. Alright, and then you're going to do your eye right above that. And in this case I'm going to do a tight eye. And a tight eye I know from experience that I need three and a half inches of rope to do that with. So I'll just go right there and put my mark for the eye. And then above that mark, I'm going to do one more mark that's uh, one long fid up the rope from that second mark. Um, and on a tubular fid like this, if you look at it, you'll see a little double line right there. This is a long fid and this is a short fid, okay? So I'm going to come up the rope one long fid from that second mark and make mark C. So I've got those three marks on the on the rope. One, it's one fit up the rope, then three and a half inches, and then one long fit. Now I'm going to go up above this last mark that I made and tie a knot in the rope. I'm going to go up the rope five fit lengths, approximately three, four, and five. And right there, I'm going to tie an alpine butterfly right above that point. So just. Do a quick butterfly, and all this does is keep the rope so that above that point, there's the core and the cover don't move relative to each other. All right, so now I go back down on my marks, and I'm going to do the layout here on the cover for my taper on the cover on the end of the rope. To do that, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So right above this mark, I want to start doing my taper on the cover. So I'm going to count up eight strands and make mark T. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And right there, I'm going to make a fairly distinct mark with my Sharpie that goes all the way around the rope. So that's mark T. Now above mark T, or actually down from mark T going towards the end of the rope, I'm going to do the, ta the taper layout. Do that, I'm going to count, I'm going to lay out six, mar six pairs of strands to be removed for the taper. And they're going to be spaced at four, four, and five uh, strand intervals. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and make, mark that pair, okay? Then go one, two, three, four, and mark the second pair. And then I'm going to go five, one, two, three, four, five and mark a third pair. And then I'm going to go four more, four more, and then five. Okay, so now I've marked six pairs along there that I'm going to remove when I do the taper on the cover. 
Next step is to go back here to the second mark, and I'll zoom back out. Okay, the second mark, I'm going to remove the, co the core from inside the cover. To do that, I'll pull just a little bit of rope out of the end here just to make that cover bunch up a little bit. And I will put my clip on here to keep this from unraveling any more than it already has. So I'm going to push the slack towards this mark right here, the second mark on the rope. And that's where I'm going to pull the, the core out of the cover. So I just take my fid to do that. I kind of take my fid and go in where I have that mark there. You can pull that string out now. Just push it down in there like that and use it to pry back the cover strands so you can see the core. Then just take your marlin spike here and stick it in and grab those core strands like that and start prying them up and out of there. And as you do that, you use your fingernails to push the cover strands back away from the core as it comes up out of there. This is where it's really important not to, uh, and you want to bend the rope sharp like that, not to catch any of the cover strands in your marlin spike or it won't, won't, the core won't come out of there. Okay, so just pop the core out like that. You can then take the uh, clip off the end here and pull that core out of there. Put your clip back on just to keep it from unraveling. Okay, so now you've got the core extracted from the cover. So now after we've got the core extracted, we want to just pull it out a little bit and then go back up here to this knot and just pull all the slack out back down to where the, co the core comes out of the cover. Get all the, you can do it a couple times. Just pull all that slack out of there to equalize the core and the cover. Okay, then you're going to make a mark right here on the core where it comes out of the cover, like that. And then pull it out, like that. So there's that first mark that I made. Take your half inch fid, and from that first mark, make mark two, one short fid, up the, up the core from that first mark. That's mark two. Then from there, measure up the rope up the core, one fid plus a short fid, and make mark three, right there. Make that mark three fairly distinct so you can see it. There's mark two. Okay, so we've got mark one, mark two, and mark three on the, the, uh, on the core. All right, so at that point we can take this uh, the core strands here, and about five inches back from the end, we're just going to remove five pairs of strands. And it does, this is not real critical where the, exactly where you do it. About five inches back from the end, just pull a couple of pull one set of strands out, cut them off. We're going to do five pairs like that. All this does is reduce the volume on the end of these core of the core, which makes it easier to pull through when you do your berry. If you've done that, see I've just tapered the end of it now, so I've done I reduced the volume a little bit. I'm gonna put my clip back on there and go back over here and I'm gonna do the taper on the, the core strands, and if you recall, I marked those, those uh, on, I'm sorry, on the cover strands. So I'll zoom in a little so you can see what I'm doing. So here's mark T, that's the uh, mark that I made that goes all the way around the rope. And my first pair of mark strands is right there. So I just Start pulling those out, 
and you want to make sure you pull away from the end of the rope. Don't pull from this direction or you'll bunch up your, your uh, eye and ruin your splice. So just pull, as you get those coming out, just start pulling on them. Pull them out of there like that. And grab the other one that I marked. So this is my first pair. Okay, there's first pair. Just always make sure you pull away from the end of the rope when you're removing these pairs. Okay, there's our third pair. And the last pair is right there. Oop. Okay, so let's count them, make sure we got the right number here. Looks like we got one, two, three, four, five, six pairs. Once you've got them marked like that, you just, or once you've got them pulled out like that, you just cut them off right where they come out of the rope. So there's the taper on the uh, on the core strands. Next step is to bury the cover inside the core uh, from mark two here over to mark three over here. So to do that, I use my wire fid. Just go over here to mark three on the uh, core. Shove the fit in right there and run it down until you come out over here at mark two all right there so then you uh, take the uh, cover strands here you can pull the tape off at this point okay and then just pull that through there until it comes out over here at mark three like that put your alligator clip back on so you don't lose that and now we're going to bury the uh, core strands inside the cover from Mark T over here, there's Mark T right there, over to this Mark C on the cover strands. So to do that, I pull on this right here, just kind of bunch, this, that bunches things up a little bit. Take my fid and run it in right here. I want to run the fid in along the back side here so that it comes out right here. So. Just take your fid, shove it in there. Be sure you don't catch any of the core strands while you're pushing it through until it comes out over here. You want it to come out on the same side as, uh, as these uh, core strands. So right there at mark T, bring your fit out. Gonna have to run it through so that it doesn't come through the middle of any of those strands, just like that. Bring it on out, take these core strands, and bring them through the wire fid, like that. Let them stick out about an inch and a half or so. Pull them down until they start to go inside the cover. And then milk the cover towards that as you pull on it. Okay, so they'll go right in and it helps to Grab right here and pull this out a little just to bunch that up and then pull that on through. And I'll bunch it up again here a little bit and pull and it'll just pull right on out. So now what we want to do is this is our crossover here. 
pull on these strands. We can get rid of this now. Pull on these strands until that crossover closes up. So see how that's going together there? And you want to go over here to the cover strands and pull on those until the two sides of the crossover close up nice and tight. And you can pull on those really hard to bear it. What you want to do is get this crossover really snug. So kind of take a look at it and grab your two tails, this tail, this tail, and pull on those. And you'll see that that will close down right there. So the next step, we can get rid of this now. We don't need it. So that looks pretty good. You want to make sure that crossover is nice and snug. Go over here and we're going to put a taper on the rest of the, the uh, cover strands here. So just right about there where it comes out right, just start cutting off a few strands at about quarter or three-eighths of an inch intervals. All you're doing here is getting a nice long gradual taper. These and you can then just cut them off in a long gradual taper. Just like that. Okay, so now you can get rid of these. When I pull on this, this will just bury inside there. So I can just start pulling on those core strands until the cover buries inside the uh, inside the core. Then go over here, grab the crossover, milk all the slack back towards here. Okay, get all the slack out of it. Mark the tail where it comes out right there, like that, and then just pull that out. Cut it about a quarter minute short of that mark. And then flare this at a long, gradual taper. You just want to, right where it comes out, you want to cut off a couple of strands, and then just up from that, a couple more, just a little bit. and then taper the rest of them at a long, gradual angle. So there's that. So now the splice is ready to bury. We just got to pull it until all this gets buried. To do that, I'll go over onto my cleat. Okay, to do the berry, I like to have some gloves on because you need to be able to pull really hard on your splice. Okay, and I take my uh, rope and I put the uh, alpine butterfly around a cleat so I can pull on it. All right, so this is what I've got. Now, I'm, what I'm gonna do to bury this is to pull the slack on the cover until all this goes inside. I can start by holding on to the crossover right here and burying this part. All you have to do on that is just pull that and it'll just bury right inside there. Now I'm ready to bury the rest of this place. So I go down the rope and I grab slack and I pull it towards the eye, okay? So I'm just starting to work this place around and bury it. Once I get to this point, I go down and I milk some more. I'm just milking the, the cover towards the, the, uh, the eye and keeping tension on both sides of, it's really important to keep tension on both sides of the splice if you pull it to close it up. So now I'm ready to stick a carabiner in there to do the rest of the bearing. Okay, so that's where we're at right now. And I'm just gonna go down and grab more slack and pull hard. As I do that, I'm just going to pull really hard right here and you'll see that it's closing up. At this point, you want to start massaging it to loosen up the strands. Like that. I'm going to go down and grab slack again. And just as you get towards the end here, you're going to build up slack and pull really hard on this. Well, you also 
pull the cover. So now it's starting to close up. I'll massage it a little more. Go grab slack and pull really hard towards the end here. Okay, it's closing up, go slow. At this point, if you want, you can take your hammer and beat on it a little bit just to loosen up the strands here. I'll show you how to do that here. Just take your carabiner out of there, lay it on the floor, beat on it a little bit, just gently. You don't need to beat on it real hard. All this does is loosen up those strands inside the rope so that they can assume their natural position. Okay, Let's take your beaner back in. And we'll pull some more on the cover. All right, we're almost there. Grab some slack. Okay, the eye is essentially closed, but I want to get it just a little bit tighter. So I'm going to pull on it once without having the carabiner in there. Just going to scrub slack. Like that right there and just pull real hard towards the end. Okay, there we go. So there is the finished eye. The only thing we have to do now is go back over onto the cleat. And this is all bunched up right here. We need to get that bunching out of there. So I'll go back over to the cleat to do that. All right, so just stick the end of the, stick the carabiner on there. Grab this right here and just pull real hard to pull all that bunching out of the cover. And you'll, you'll feel it let loose when you do that. Okay, so there is our finished eye splice. All we have to do now is do some uh, lock stitching on here to make sure that the splice can never come undone.